Andy here from Sunny's Eyes. Um, I recently completed a project, or nearly completed a project, uh, for my niece to be. She wanted paper flowers for her wedding. So she gave me a couple of ideas and then let me run with it. So this is what I came up with. And I'll show you when I go back down to the desk, I'll show you a little bit better. And these are the bridesmaids ones. Um, and I thought I would do a tutorial. I'm not gonna say a quick tutorial, cause it won't be. But um, I thought I would do a tutorial on how I made them, um, starting with the painted paper. So here we go. Okay, so these are the flowers more up close. These are the roses. This is the one flower she knew she wanted. Um, she'd seen them, I think, on Pinterest. Um, these are like little mums. And these, this one here, actually, if you can kind of see, is actually three roses glued together on the same stem. So it kind of gives you a little puff, you know, puffier one. These, um, the flowers themselves she bought and the gray ones she bought and I added leaves. Um, and then there's cherry blossoms down here. Let's see if you can see them good. They're right in here and they're pushed down a little bit. They were a little bit taller but they're pushed down a little bit. And um, then I made the leaves and I will try to show you how I made each thing and then how I glued them together and then um, you can arrange your own flowers from there. This is what the underside looks like. The, all, the, all the stems are coming down and they're bound together and as I went around putting these together, I put a few together how I liked them, put a roll of, put a thing of, um, oh, what do you call it, scotch tape around and then I added a few more and went around another round and I just tore a piece off and went around and um, until I got them all arranged how I want and then I put a nice secure couple of wraps of scotch tape. Now this is going to be covered by, of all things, not burlap, not ribbon, but it's going to be covered in mustache duct tape. Yes, she's that fun. Actually, the uh, flowers themselves are out of the first book she ever bought herself. It's one of the Harry Potter series. So um, I thought that would be more meaningful if she had a book that she really liked to make them out of. So um, I'm going to put these up and we will go down to the desk. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you how to make the roses first. This is what a single rose looks like. Um, so I'll show you how to make those first. Uh, first I painted the paper and I just mixed a container of watercolor. This, the color I needed, I matched her color swatches that she wanted. Um, so they would be exactly the color she wants. Um, these are the light ones, these are the dark ones. I just took a big brush like this and I just painted the paint on, flipped it over, painted the paint on, and then I threw them on the floor of my studio to dry. I have a carpet so it's, you know, won't get gross. Um, I just let those dry. And then to make the actual roses, I am going to cut, I have two pieces, and um, since I'm going to use both of them, I'm going to cut them half at the same time. I grab my scissors over here. Um, so I just whacked them in half. Then, this is the tedious part, and I did most of this in front of the TV. Um, so I folded it in half this way. There is my opening at the top. Then, in order to get 60 degrees, because each of the petals, the flower has six petals, which means you can't just fold it in half and fold it in half again. You have to actually um, use a 60 degrees if you want them perfect. Otherwise, your petals, some will be connected higher up and some will go down farther. So this is what I figured out. And I put my little circle that's in my protractor right there. I put that on my paper, on the edge. And this big purple line is the 60 degree line. Then I folded my paper up along that, slipped it out, creased my paper really good. Then you just fold this one over to that fold and make sure you get it really snug, that point, you know, nice and pointy. And that will help you get your flowers um, just right. And then I take, I just started and just kind of made a petal shape. And I try to start and stop at the same place on the paper. So if I go here, I want to go up the same amount there. And I am off just a tiny bit, I think. See what will happen if they're not exactly on is you'll have some petals that are you know connected farther up here and some that go down farther. 
And see, my petals are kind of a little off, so I just kind of practice and, you know, go around and trim it up just a little bit till I get it just how I want it. You just fold it out and check, and that's pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to cut it down just a little farther on the sides because I want my petals to be just a little bit longer. So I'm just going to do that. And since I started like right about here, I want to start right about there on that petal. And let's see what we got now. Should be pretty good. Yep, that's great. It's just book text that's been painted. And then when you paint it, when you put the water on it and it dries, it actually makes the paper just a little bit tougher, which is really good because I want it to be strong enough to hold the bends in the petals. Um, so to get a, uh, what do you call it, a pattern, I go right where that point is and right to the center. And I do the same on this point, right to where that point is and right to the center. Now you have a template. So cut your petal out of a piece of cardstock, or you can use um, heavier white paper if you're worried about having problems. Then you don't have to try and cut that same petal shape every single time. So this is kind of just a rough go at it. I was uber careful when I did it. And then this is okay because we can still use this because we're going to cut up our flowers. So do it again. And I tell you what, I did not realize how many hours this project was really going to take. It took a long time. You'll see just by my tutorial how long it takes just to do um, enough to make one flower and show you. And imagine making a couple dozen and then a bunch of the other flowers that are in there. And I'll show you how to make those too. And this is not new. Uh, this She sent me this step-by-step -step that showed how to do this um, along with the pictures of the flowers that she wanted. There's, I mean, this is not a new, I don't know who started it, but it's not a new technique. Um, it's been around. If, you, if anybody knows who actually, you know, put that first tutorial of this style up, um, you can leave a comment so that everybody can... Um, know who did and thank them kindly. I have no idea. I did not have any names or anything on the pictures that she sent me. So, okay. One more. You have to have three flowers or three sets of petals for each flower. So you can kind of see it adds up. And I did a lot of this, like I said, in front of the TV because I can't sit in my office chair for too long or I am in deep trouble with my back. Okay, so here's the petal. And um, some of the roses I made were smaller and I just cut down my petal when I was ready so that I still had my template so that I wouldn't have to guess every time. So we take one flower and we slit it from there to the very point in the center, set that aside. We take one and cut out one petal and then one more and we cut out two petals and you're going to need all the petals so don't throw them away um, I got my handy dandy glue gun over here put it where I can use it with my right hand today I normally just use it with my left hand but I'm gimpy <laughs> okay so first petal you put glue on one of the petals I am using hot glue and I think I need another stick um, and just glue it right over that so you have a cup shape and then let it dry then the same one this is you know has one petal missing still you glue that petal and then just fold it right in and over like that even more cup shaped you can see where that's going same with this one the last two are going to be different, but this one also, you glue one petal. So you have one less petal in each bloom as you go. You got five, four, three. And your second one, like this, I put a little bit of glue on one side, 
And then I folded this around so that it could get the hot glue. Oops, now I got that tweaked. There. So I folded it like a like ice cream cone. And I just glued it along that edge. So that's going to be part of the center of the bloom. And then this one, I'm going to go ahead and cut this part off because it's going to need to be that way. And then I just put a tiny bit of glue on one side like that and then just curl it around. Just curl it right around like that. And that's going to be your very center. And to put them together, you're going to have to cut just a little bit off of, especially this pointy one, you're going to have to cut a little bit of that off so that it will sit down in there and a little bit of this one off. Otherwise, they don't want to sit down in there very well. And before I am going to put them all together, I am going to give them a little roll. And I should have rolled the hot glue one while it was wet. And it worked okay. And if you give it a roll as soon as you glue it, then it stays nice. It's not hard to twist. So there's the bottom one. Then the one with four petals. Same thing. I'm just rolling them around my brush. Put it to the edge. Make sure I'm getting where you can see this. Put it to the edge. Give it a little curl. Pull it out sideways. Keeps your petal curled. Let's do the same thing with all of them. And like I said, if you um, bend the ones that you just hot glued, then they bend easier. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bend and it's going to be a little wonky because it's kind of straight. So it's going to kind of bend and do like that. This one, same thing. Roll over the petals. Roll over the petal. You can ink these before you make them if you want to. Um, you know, you could go around the edges with ink. Um, just while they're out flat, just take your, your tool, your little bit of ink. I use right persimmon because of the colors I was doing and you can just add a little ink to the edge that way. I inked mine after and I'll show you that. Um, so put a glob of hot glue down in there. It doesn't have to be a huge one. Put your petal in there and kind of figure out how you want your petals to line up. You know, so they're not all stacked a lot. So there you go. There's the first one set in. And I have glue stuck to my fingers. Darn stuff. That's the only thing I don't like about hot glue is I always manage to get all stuck to my fingers. Go figure. I am just that way. The little strings go everywhere and drive me batty. I have to tell you, it doesn't take that far to drive me batty usually. So and kind of figure out where you want it. Stick it in there. Then for this one, I just put glue on the bottom. I just put a glob of glue right on there. Then I put that in here. You kind of want to make sure when you get these taller ones like that, they're not leaning off to the side too far. And then finally, your little doodad goes right in the center there. And it just sticks up. Well, it sticks to the pedal if you do it like that. It's too bad. So there is the basic construction. Might have to hold it a little bit till it dries. All that glue piling up wants to kind of keep it warm and a little unstable right at first. So there's that. And then I took my tool with my right persimmon and I just did this on the edges. Kind of just got in there and just did the very edges. I didn't want a ton. So see, I'm kind of just barely catching an edge just like that so that you can see they have a little bit on the edges but not a ton. It's just enough to delineate the difference between the petals and that is mostly just because it's book text and the book text is a little bit busy and so this just kind of gives your petals you know so you can see the edges a little bit better. So you can see how they're just stacked all in there. That's what it looks like on the back. And to put these into um, an arrangement, so I would have stems, I wanted pretty stems because they're going to come down and then they're going to be wrapped, but I wanted them to not be just plain wire. So for the roses, um, this I use this kind of wire. It's It looks like this when it's just plain. It came on a roll. I got it at Michael's in the floral department, and it it's wire wrapped in twine like paper twine or raffia, raffia, raffia. <laughs> um, so 
it I just cut it into sticks like this and I use a little bit I put just a dab of hot glue on the end and I have mine on low setting don't do this if you have it on high setting lick your fingers you can kind of do this and get all the ends caught in there don't do this if you have your gun on high temp you will burn your hands off as Lindsay would say and I just did that then it won't unwind because this stuff just unwinds right off of there if you're not careful um, then I took my pliers, which are buried under my punches. Oh boy. And I just grabbed the end and let's see if I can get where you can really see it good. I can't see my camera very good. Okay. So, and I just bent it around like this into kind of a circle. Then I grabbed it like this and bent it down and I bent it a little bit more than square. Can you see that? It's actually bent down just a little bit more. And then I bent it a little bit straight. So you have it so that the stem kind of comes from under the middle of it. So there's that. There. And then I just take and put a dab of hot glue. Well, okay, a big glob of hot glue because you really want it to stick well. And it will stick to that twine. You know, I didn't have any problem with those flowers sticking. And I'm just going to put it right on there so that my point goes right into that little hole we made, that little round circle we made. And then blow on it, cool it off, and then you can set it aside and we'll put leaves and stuff on later. So that's how we got that. This one is a little bit smaller than the other one, but similar thing. Um, I will show you how I made the cherry blossoms and the, um, oh boy, there they went. The cherry blossoms and the little mums and I took the liberty of going ahead and punching these out and I'm going to put them on this white so you can kind of see them. Um, I took the liberty of punching those out ahead because you know it makes it a lot easier to show you. Um, I used this punch. I have no idea who these punches are for. Maybe this one says on the back. Nope, just says a pad. Oh, Fiskars. There you go. It's Fiskars and it's just this flower like this. Makes excellent flowers and flower centers. Um, I used a snowflake punch. This one is not marked anywhere, so I don't know, but it's just a little snowflake. And where did my other one go? Oh, there it is. And this whale punch. And it's just a big flower. It's these ones. And paper shapers it would be EK Success paper shapers. Um, so I have these. I punched them out. And I also did not ink these first, I waited until I was done. So I will show you how I put those together. I have two of the big ones, two of the medium sized ones, and two snowflakes. And I will show you how I shaped them. Where's my, my handy dandy tool, the back of my brush. I'll tell you what, you can do a lot with the back of a brush. Not to mention what you can do with the front of a brush, right? And I just put it in the center and I bent up both sides so they make a cup shape. And I do that all the way around. This part I do first because it's really hard once it's put together. So just bend all your little shapes in like that. I have to tell you, it's not quite as easy to do this with a gimpy wing. All right, so those two are done. These I used my tweezers. Did they go AWOL? Tell me they didn't go AWOL. Drat. They're here somewhere. Oh, there they are underneath the punch. Okay, and I just use these kind. They're just kind of pointy. And I put my tweezer so that this side of my tweezer, not this side, but this side, goes right down the center of the pedal. I just gripped it nice and hard and just bent. And I just did that all the way around. And it makes a bend right in the center of the pedal. It's much easier than trying to put it around a brush because they're so skinny. I don't know if you can see that good. I just I put it, put it on here in the middle, squeeze my tweezers because you want to make it flat, and then I just pressed it against my finger to turn it like that. So two of those. I'll do this one really quick. And when you do a whole bunch of them, so the first couple will kind of 
are experimental and then the rest of them it, you don't have to think so much you can watch your TV while you're doing it or listen to whatever's on your computer or your your tunes watch your tunes okay and then for these little guys I wanted them cup shaped so this is this is actually the pad out of a iPad cover and you know, they put this inside to hold it nice while it's in the box so it's kind of like bubbly but if you push down it's kind of like a it's softer than a mouse pad and it just cups those right up so you can see they're really cup shaped so I'll put that back out of the way these are really easy to put together too you just stack and glue so and glue the next one on. I alternate the petals because I wanted mine alternated. And then I just kind of push these up just a little bit, stick it on there right in the center, just like that. And then go again, put this on alternating. See, it's getting a nice full flower there. And then once you um, bump up the centers a little bit and push up the petals a little, it makes them look like a mum. I do like mums. I like daisies. Anything daisy-like, I pretty much like. I like Fever Few and Chamomile. They're the tiny little daisies. I like the little daisies you get in your lawn. Daisies are my favorite. Okay, so you've got this stacked up like that. Then I just took my... Right persimmon again, distress ink. That's what I had to go with this. I kind of munch it off on my thing there so I don't have a ton on there. And I just went right across the whole thing like this. And it just catches the edges of all the petals. And I didn't want a ton on there, so that worked out perfect. And then I just kind of did this in the center. Got a little bit on there so it gives it a little bit of variation. Oops, can't get the lid on, holy Pete. Then I fluff up the center little pieces so they stick up a little bit then these petals I just go around and push them up just all of those center ones hope that's on camera right it should be get these little fellas all kind of pushed up like that and you can kind of make some of them a little more in and some of them a little out and then I take the top layer of those two bottom ones I take the upper layer and push them up just like that and there you go you have your pretty little mom so that one's easy it's all punching so you can just like they punch out fast since you can use a punch um, let's see it's cherry blossoms yes let us do the cherry blossoms I didn't punch these out ahead but it's simple I just use this plain flower this one's by family treasures had it first thinking ever so and I'm gonna have to put this one down because this these are hard to punch. I'll tell you what. Okay. Now this you can also use. I think I want the pen I was using. Get that here. Um, this is just a nice round fat point of a back of a pen. This is the one I found that just works really good. It has eyeballs. Look, isn't that cool? Okay, never mind. So I just push right inside each of these petals like that. I just run, just kind of do a little circle, and it makes your petals cupped. Just do all the way around, and then I just do that same thing in the center, and I just make circles and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and then look at it's cup shaped, and you have like the little wrinkles for your petals. Super simple. Then. I use this teeny tiny little punch, also no name on it. It's a teeny tiny little sunshine looking punch, excellent for flower centers. And huh, I don't have any yellow, so we're going to use green and pretend it's yellow. How's that? Because it would take me a minute to dive for yellow. Okay. And that little punch is hard to do too. So, itty bitty teeny tiny little sunshine. Take the back of your paintbrush again, push down right into your finger. You don't even have to have anything else. Just push it right onto your finger like that. Makes it cup shaped. Turn it over. Give it the wee tiniest little drab of hot glue. 
pop that right in the center and since I already have this out I just kind of barely touched the very edges you probably won't even be able to see it on camera but just touch the edges to give them a little bit of um, color like cherry blossoms they often have a little bit of pink on them so and I the pink whoa clashed with the peach so I used peach on the edges um, and then this would be yellow so there's the cherry blossoms oh and I can show you how I made different cherry blossoms I made some that were smaller and you know more open and some that were like buds oh crap sorry oh these are a bummer to punch I love the whale punches or the hand squeezy ones these old ones are whoa difficult so I'm going to leave that black on there because that shows up nice against the white. So I did kind of the same thing as I did for the big flowers. I just cut a hunk right out like that. And same thing with the hot glue gun. And just glued them together like that. So then you have just a little bloom. You can put a little bit of yellow in there or you can touch it with um, a marker. Or you can, you know, put part of a little center like we used. This one, you can, or you can put a little marker in there. And then I took this little feller, just a little two guy here, and just kind of really scrunched him in a circle, so like that. Just kind of fold it over like a looks like an ice cream cone. Add a wee touch. I mean, a wee touch of hot glue. And here you have your barely open bud. You have a partially open flower, and you have an open one. And, oops, when I put these on, I wanted to have them be on the stem. It looks like wood more, you know. Cherry blossom wood would look like that, so I'll show you how I did that. I just put this fella right on top here. Just kind of squished it into the hot glue. This does have my rose on the other end. Exciting. And... Then I just put a little dab of hot glue here, added this one, kind of hold it on there a little bit, then another piece of hot glue over here, and added the full cherry blossom. So you kind of get a stick like that, and when I do the leaves, I'll put leaves on this too so you can see how I did the leaves. Um, for the leaves, I already cut out couple because I had to use my my die. I'll show you the die. I'm burying it over here. This is the die I used. It is the Tim Holtz Alterations and it's called Tattered Flower Garland. And they all have these little tiny holes in the center so you can hook everything together with brads. It's pretty nifty. Um, that I had done that a couple times and it's pretty fun but I usually use them other ways. So I just put, punch those out because they're going to come out anyway, and at least then they're not sticking out funny. And then these, I took my tweezer, just the fat end there. It's the back of the handle. And I just drew a line right on my puffy pad here, so you can see you get, you get that nice line. And... You can kind of bend it a little bit back, but you get your nice cup shape. You could just kind of fold it right along there. You get a nice cup shape. Then I turned it over, used the back of my paintbrush again. I tell you what, it gets a lot of use. And I just go right along the edge. So there's just the very edge of it there, like that. And then, if you can see, it gives your leaf shape. So turn it over on the back. Run it along there again. I used it on the little ones too. And it gives you a really pretty shape. Now the larger ones, and I made even larger ones for the roses. But, and I used little tiny ones up here for my cherry blossoms, but then I just glued them on like that. I, don't, I didn't have any of the little tiny ones, I guess. Well, let's just cut one down. You can kind of see what it's like. So what I did, 
was just took the little tiny one, a little bit of hot glue, and I glued it right there where you wouldn't see where that was hooked onto the stem as easy. And I did the same thing with other ones kind of going around. I used the smaller ones than this. It comes in three size, three, four sizes, four sizes. So I used these, a couple of these and these size ones to go around the cherry blossoms and then these on the mums. So you can kind of see how I just glued on the things as I went. Then for the mums, I used wire, floral wire. This, what gauge is this? This is 20 gauge. Comes in a pack of 30. No, it doesn't have a price tag on it. It was like three or four bucks. Um, and I wanted to have these be on more than one stem. So, where's my tape? Okay, this is floral tape. It's kind of funky looking, and it's not really sticky until you stretch it. And if you watch, it stretches and see how it turns a little bit white. That activates the stickum. So, I started at the top of my wire, and it's really hard to get it started sometimes. But once you get it started, you just pull and then twist your wire, and it will wrap right down along your wire. And then make sure you pull it so it stays sticky and then it sticks to itself. And boy, my hand won't do it today. But anyway, you go down your wire like this, making sure you pull it so it's sticky. And just keep twisting your wire, pull so it's sticky, and keep twisting, pull so it's sticky. And if you do enough of these, your fingers will feel sticky. And that's probably good enough. That'll at least let me show you what I was, what I'm talking about. And my wires, I don't cut, I don't cut any of this stuff with my regular jewelry cutters. I use my needle nose cutter part. And then I just took and made myself several stems. Again with the flyers, make a circle, just like that. Grasp across your circle, bend it straight down so you have a little place to glue right there. This time, you will not only have to put a glob of glue on and stuck it, stuck it, stick it, down, but we're also going to have to put a little bit of hot glue that goes over the top. This does not stick to hot glue. It is anti-stickum, basically. So I put a nice big glob, put this in, let it cool just a little bit. I want to stick it down in there good, just so it's the same way we did the other ones. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and just put it so that it connects over the top of the wire. It will glue to itself and it makes it encased. So there you go. And then let it dry. Okay, so I put other flowers on here. There's not a flower on there, I don't have one punched out. But to connect them, just make a branch. How you know you can make this one taller or shorter or however you want. Then take your floral tape again, stretch to make it sticky, put it around. it started is sometimes tricky there we go and just wrap it around stretch to make it sticky and wrap just wrap it right around and this makes your um, your stem pretty and th this comes in different colors there's green and I think it's like a really really dark brown or a black um, and it probably comes in brown somewhere else too I don't know but um, this is what I thought would be really pretty so then you can bend them you can make one stand up. You can make, you know, you got all kinds of options here for branches. You can do them however you want to. So that shows you how to make the flowers and the leaves. The leaves I did edge and I used, just used this and just went like this all the way around. I didn't want a lot, just enough to make it get, you know, have a little bit of shape. So just a little bit. And then I did that before I glued them. And this is not the color of leaves I used. Don't worry. 
um, the color that I have for the leaves, I don't have any more of. And I thought, this is nice and bright. You know, you should be able to see how it's shaped and everything. And then for these flowers, I just put a dab of glue down here. And I just stuck it to the back of the flower like that. And then there you go. And you can, you know, bend them a little bit or however you want. You can arrange how far out or how close you want them, you know, on the back. And once they're in a bouquet of flowers where there's flowers all around, you don't see the goodies on the back here. You only see the top part. If you had just a few, you might want to disguise under there a little bit better. But because mine were all bunched nice, then it didn't matter. So there's how to make those flowers. And then when I started putting all the flowers together, I would put them together like that and wrap the tape. No, I didn't use that tape. <coughs> Sorry. Mm, red scotch tape. There we go. I just whack off a chunk so that it can go around um, like about one and a half times. And I would put a bunch together. We'll stick this one in here too, just so you can kind of see. And I, where I knew I wanted them to connect. This is where I want my handle to start. So I just go around, kind of get it sticky good, and then pull it really tight like that. And this piece is really long, so it, I wouldn't have made it that long to do it, but for purposes. So you can see that you start doing that. And then when you want to add another piece to it. Let's just whack this one off and I'll show you. And you can put several of these together. You don't have to put them all together at once. You know, I mean, these are not obviously arranged any way exciting, but um, when you put like a, two or three more stems on here, they go around it with the scotch tape again, and that will hold it secure because if you just put all of them one together, one big bundle and go around it, they can slip in and out, but this way they can't slip in and out because of the tape. But if you don't tape it, they can just come, they could just slip right out. So that's the need for the tape. Add two or three, maybe four, go around it with tape. Add two or three or four, go around it with tape until you get to the size of the bouquet that you want. And you will end up with these. This is the, the bridesmaid's bouquet. It's smaller. And here again is the bride's bouquet. And these are the little cherry blossom guys right here. So, oh, I'm going to show you. I'll show you on the bridesmaid one because it's easier to see. But you can see how all of the stems come down. And you see this big wad of tape right here? That is going to be covered up. She wants duct tape. Mustache duct tape. Can you believe it? It's so awesome. Um, for the handle instead of the, instead of like burlap or ribbon or, you know, something else. So, I am going to wrap this one in duct tape. You get to see me on this one. This is the first go, so we'll see how it works. Pull off some duct tape. Get a nice big go. <coughs> Sorry about that. And I'm going to start just up past the tape. <coughs> and I think I am going to do it like at an angle. And I will cut off the excess at the top so it's nice and straight. And I'm just going to go around like that. And it needs to be nice. Okay, so I'm going to cut off the bottoms of these. How far do I want to do that? Okay. I'm going to cut, just cut the bottoms off of these longer ones. And I will reseal them with um, the hot glue. But I want to get these all nice and about the same length. 
This stuff is a little harder to get through because it's got that raffia stuff that it's probably better cut with paper, but oh, come on, oh, I'm trying to get to it once. There, okay. And I'm gonna bring the duct tape back down around to the bottom so it comes down just to the end. And I'm going to cut it. This is an experiment. We can always take it back off and try again if we need to. Okay. And wrap that. And there you go. Now, I personally probably would not have chosen duct tape, but I say hooray for Jessica. Jessica is my niece, my soon-to-be niece. Um, she is getting married in about a week. And so I want to make sure this is all ready for her. Kind of stiffen off a little extra stuff right there. So there is her handles for her flowers. And I think I think I want to take my little scissors and trim that even at the bottom so that it's not at an angle. I think I need to do that. So I'm going to grab my scissors from under here. And I think what I'll do is pull up the duct tape so I can make a nice straight cut. And I think if I do it just like that, that should do it. Yep. Actually, I don't think I even need to worry about the bottoms. They're going to be fine. So there's her duct tape handle. And I will finish on the other ones so that you don't have to watch all of it. But that is how I made the bouquet for my niece's wedding, my niece and nephew. Very sweet kids. I'm very excited to be part of their wedding and be able to do the flowers for their wedding. So there it is. If I missed anything, leave me a comment and if you have any questions and I will try to get back to you. I don't, my comments come to my email, but I don't check my email, email you know, maybe once or twice, once a day or every couple days. So wait for it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I would love to hear your comments and thanks for watching.